deflagration, and this is, this is one of those common definitions that we'll talk about throughout, I think, the, uh, the, the events today, but it's propagation of a combustion zone in, a, uh, in an unreacted medium that's less than the speed of sound versus detonation. Detonation is a propagation uh, at the speed of sound. An explosion is the bursting or rupture of an enclosure, including a room or a building. This is, this is important. It's not just those little vessels and things. You can, of course, have the, the buildings and, and other facilities or rooms due to the development of an internal pressure from a deflagration. So that deflagration yields some pressure, and, and that, that pressure has nowhere else to go. It's not properly vented. We'll get into that a little later on. Um, causes a complete system and uh, catastrophic failures. Um, types of combustible <coughs> dust explosions. You always have a primary explosion. That primary explosion occurs uh, when there's a, a small-scale suspension it meets a source of ignition, and you get that, uh, that deflagration. Uh, again, a small piece of equipment, uh, I mean a piece of equipment or uh, a room. The secondary explosion is generally the one that is more deadly and has more catastrophic results. Secondary explosion occurs when dust accumulated on floors and other areas. That unseen dust is now stirred up as a result of that primary uh, dust explosion, and then that's when you have the, uh, the catastrophic results again ignited in air. The minimum explosible concentration, you'll see it MEC, you'll see that on material safety data sheets, you'll see it uh, in a lot of the literature that you read, but it's basically that smallest amount of dust that when suspended in the air, and if it meets a uh, source of ignition, will create a deflagration, okay? This is just an example that uh, using some training before, an example of the density required, a 25 watt light bulb six feet away is not visible, at the MEC for coal dust. Uh, generally, if you cannot see your hand, make out the features of your hand at arm's length in front of your face, you are at that minimum exposable concentration. Um, it's normally present inside uh, process equipment, your, your bulk bins, um, silos, things like that. Um, this is an important to note, and this is as we talk about housekeeping and that secondary <coughs> explosion. You can have that minimum explosible concentration on rafters, beams, ductwork, and other places in your plant when you look at it spread over, over an area. So this is why housekeeping is extremely important. Um, the, uh, when I joined West and looked at the history, uh, of course, because it's a pharmaceutical plant, the floors were pristine. They were beautiful. That area above the ceiling is what caught them. Um, so when you look at your housekeeping, what you want to do is think about all those places that you would want to go if you wanted to hide from your boss. <laughs> That's where that dust is going to go. Okay. So now this is where we get to the uh, the uh, say the semi wow factor. But when we talk about dust explosions and deflagrations, we're talking milliseconds. This stuff happens quickly. Um, you don't really have a chance to realize if you're in that immediate zone that it's going on. It's, 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 uh, it's almost too late. So with this model, you have a piece of process equipment and you have an initial internal deflagration. It creates a shock wave. So that deflagration, there's, there's pressure, there's a shock wave that moves out. There are elastic rebound shock waves and those move around and stir up that residual dust. Again, this is why housekeeping is so critical. Dust cloud, again, caused by that, um, um, the, the rebound waves. Then you have containment failure because of the initial deflagration. Now look at this. We're just above 75 milliseconds that all of this has happened. Secondary deflagration is initiated. <coughs> Secondary deflagration propagates through the interior. And you see you're starting to lose containment, you're starting to lose building structure, and again, we're at 200 milliseconds. Secondary deflagration vents from the structure. When that reaction takes place, and when that explosion, that deflagration starts, it's going to vent itself, and it's going to go through whatever it can. Okay? Again, we're talking, at this point, 300 milliseconds. Secondary deflagration causes collapse and residual fires. Let's put a suppression system here. Let's put a rotary airlock here. Okay? We've got a vent to the outside. You have a, my, my little thing that show up. But you would have a deflagration in here. 
this reacts, the way these are designed, these uh, suppression systems, they react in a matter of milliseconds. Generally, they're, they're, they're uh, based on your KST and Pmax, your dust data, and how you're handling this, these are designed to sense pressure differential because you're going to have a pressure wave that comes out from a deflagration that travels at roughly 1,000 feet per second. The fireball comes behind it at about 30 feet per second, but the pressure comes out first. So these sense a pressure differential and say, I've got a problem, I'm shooting the extinguishing media to control that. So in this case, you would contain it, you would control it here by the extinguishing media. You also have rotary airlocks that sometimes act as uh, you don't want that residual pressure getting out and going to other parts of the process, so this rotary airlock would also prevent that from happening. And then the byproducts of combustion are exhausted to outside. In the next case, you have primary deflagration here, shock wave. You have another one, residual shock wave. Then you have the shock waves flowing through. Then you have a suspended cloud. But in this case, we've installed segregation and isolation barriers in terms of firewalls or rated walls. And we've installed an X vent on this side. So we want the explosion, if it happens, to vent in the direction that we want it. Now over here, there's nothing that we care about. That is a rule under uh, NFPA standards that you don't vent to an area where you've got things that you care about, people, uh, significant property structure, things like that. So then you have another, that another explosion or deflagration that happens and it ignites that layer of dust. And then you have a larger scale explosion that now is vented, okay? So these are the, um, the design features that you'd look at to uh, that first scenario, no venting, nothing to relieve the pressure. You have catastrophic loss, whereas with this, you're doing some things to vent in the event of an explosion to minimize that, uh, that 